It is the Practical Prayer Podcast on New Thought Media Network. This is Bill over here and Carol over there, and we are getting ready to record episode number 143 of the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm glad to have you joining us on New Thought Media Network, either live in person right now uh, on the live stream uh, or on any of the recorded channels on Facebook and YouTube. If you have a question or a comment uh, and you're on live, you can go ahead and put it in the comments and we will see that uh, in real time and can respond uh, uh, accordingly. Uh, if not, you can always go to the website, uh, which is be the light.com, the home of practical prayer, B E the light.com. And there's a section about the podcast, including a button that you can interact with the podcast hosts and send us a message, and then we will uh, uh, respond accordingly. And when I say respond accordingly, I don't mean that we're going to make a whole show out of it, although we might. And we <laughs> may or may not turn it into a prayer or a prayer request or address it as a question. Um, or we might be completely belligerent and not do anything with it. But, you know, that's the nature of having microphones. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just love independence? You know, you can do it the way you want to do it now. Um, yep. Yep. There's a, a, a certain amount of freedom. So, and when I was, uh, I used to be in the radio biz and one of my colleagues, um, he and his partner would start pontificating on a morning show and start talking about things. And then one of them would interrupt and say, of course, we don't really know anything. We're just a couple of idiots with microphones. <laughs> when I started on the air, and I said to you a long time, you know, just before we came on about how long I had been at the microphone. And as I was waiting to come on, I said, it's been longer than that because I was on terrestrial radio in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And there were rules, you know, it was just really rules and box, you were boxed in and all of that. So now this is like total freedom to me. So you can have any kind of mic you want, any kind of whatever, whatever. Yep. So, yep. I first got into broadcasting and we had a transmitter. I was licensed by the federal government and there was rules. Yes. And we were sharing the frequency. My university was sharing the frequency with another university. So we had to turn it off at the appropriate moment. You left the transmitter on, the other university would get testy. <laughs> <laughs> and there were lights and signs and all that business, so yeah. it's, it's pretty easy now. Yep. So the episode today is going to be about overcoming doubt. And mm. we've, we've, we've done um, podcast episodes about doubt. But I, I resonated with you when you, when you mentioned that because um, there's a certain piece in... Well, if I claim something in a prayer, then the infinite creative power that creates everything makes it happen. Except it's not going to happen, and that's because of doubt. Which is particularly sim similar to doing a traditional prayer and then having God decide no or later. Yeah, yeah. Interesting that you said that because I created a blog. I didn't finish it, but... Uh, just about a couple of hours ago, it came into my head, you know, yes, no, and maybe. Mm -hmm. And that always found, to me, I found troublesome. And so after a practical prayer, learning that, I said, ah, oh, okay, that's why you find this troublesome, because God has too many answers, and that's too confusing. <laughs> How do you know what to do next? How do you know? And then, you know what, he, what really stops me? It's like, I don't know God this way. I might not have a label on it, you know, affirmative prayer, practical prayer, whatever, but all along my whole life, I knew what didn't fit. Mm -hmm. So now I got labels and that's cool. <laughs> but this yes, no, maybe thing, not too cool. So uh, I understand. Well, let us dive into that in the episode. We'll go ahead and start it. For those of you who are on New Thought Media Network, uh, this is the podcast episode that's going to go through podcast post-production and then drop uh, in podcast land a week from Wednesday. Um, so in the meantime, enjoy. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a new thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. 
Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol. You know what? I'm going to say that again because I heard myself get tongue tied. So, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here rev- with Reverend Bill Marcioni. And welcome to the podcast. And I think your gears are, are, are mashing there a little bit because we're going to talk about not just doubt, but overcoming doubt. Because there's really no room in a practical prayer for doubt. It is a creative exercise, but we have a little piece in it where uh, we acknowledge that there can be doubt, and there's a whole lot packed into that. So as we talk about that, you go ahead and start with what we're going to talk about, and then I will embellish. Okay, so with practical prayer, it's it's very straightforward. However, uh, in the old days, or across the street, <laughs> on the other side... <laughs> The other side. (laughs) Yeah. It's uh, God will say yes, no, or maybe. And I've always found that troublesome because you enter into the prayer space with doubt. Right. Because the thing that you want or you desire um, may not be concrete in your mind, really. But even if you're looking for direction or assurance, uh, you go in with doubt to begin with. Mm-hmm. So I just could never figure out like, yes, no, maybe that's confusing. I mean, I don't know about all this. So with practical prayer, you get to the realization and it seems as though by the time you've gone through step one and two and, and the preparation, obviously, you should be able to um, articulate the realization or feel the realization without doubt, but not so. And uh, N- so not the, always so, yes. Yeah, it, not always. And there's like a couple of steps that you put in there that or subsets that mm-hmm. you put in. The, the, the two spares about yeah. doubt and reaffirmation. Yep. And you put twos. <laughs> I remember you had two. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so it reminded me of science. When I looked at it, I said, okay, we'll do this. But, oh, my God, um, it's a subscript. What is this? I, I was told there would be no math. Yeah. <laughs> right. But it's it's a good thing. It is a good thing. Uh, let me use the word work, because just as we were leaving the pre-show, we talked about uh, it may not be, it may be work or it shouldn't be work. It could be, but n- be not afraid of the work, uh, because it's your work is a good work. So what is causing the doubt in my mind? And it could be that I don't have a realistic understanding of what's possible and and I know you're going to clean that up for me but okay we'll there, do there that. you know it's um realism does have a place in this does it not absolutely absolutely and it depends on what you call real but let's let's talk about the uh the world that we're in so there's this and I think of it as a Venn diagram you know the overlapping circles and Uh, One circle is traditional religion, where God can do anything, perform miracles, uh, raise the dead, uh, create a woman out of a man's rib, I mean, all that stuff. And God can just do whatever God wants to do and be completely, you know, can completely ad lib. Uh, On the other end of the spectrum, and when you ask that God for something, the answer is going to be yes or no, or maybe, because it it might show up in your life or it might not show up in your life. And the understanding there is that if it doesn't show up in your life, it's because God didn't want you to have it or God didn't want you to have it yet. So it puts everything into the judgment, evaluation and control of God, which doesn't seem like a bad idea. I mean, if there's an infinite power, that's kind of the one that's going to be in control. The other circle is self-help. 
And everybody who talks about creating affirmations to claim our good and change our lives. And there are people have been doing this forever. You know, you've got uh, Tony Robbins and Wayne Dyer and Gabby Bernstein and, 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 and it's been going on forever. So, and you learn to do these positive, affirmative statements about the good that you're inviting. You say, I am prosperous. I have lots of love in my life. And all of these happy, clappy things that we can say. And it works. It works to a remarkable degree. And then there's an overlap. Because there is the possibility that something that somebody's putting into an affirmation doesn't show up in their life. Mm -hmm. Now... What we're doing at the heart of a practical prayer is an affirmation. We are saying, I am prosperous. I am deeply loved. I am healthy and comfortable and vibrant and carefree. We are claiming whatever it is that we want. And we're not doing it from the small self, ego-based, I'm in control of my life, I'm making decisions and, and work in it. We do it from the awareness that there is an infinite creative power that started out with itself and then big bang this entire universe into being and everything is that one, everything is that divine presence showing up in its own way, which includes each of us and we're each using that same power to create our lives. And that same power has created our lives up until now. Everything that we are, that's all the particles, all the molecules, all the atoms, all of it, the subatomic particles, the energy, everything is that divine presence expressed as us. And everything that we know Everything that we think, everything that we believe, is also that one taking unique form as us. So the model changes a little bit in new thought because we understand that the infinite that has created everything is able to create something new. But there's no decision making in that process. The laws of nature didn't change ever since the beginning of time. They have been unfolding and interacting with themselves and bringing more and more stuff into being. But it's the same laws. So if that creative process works anywhere, it works everywhere and it's working for us. That means that that law, that creative power, God, is always saying yes. Whatever it is that we're claiming, God is saying yes. So why do our affirmations sometimes not work? Damn it. <laughs> And it's because the claim that we are making goes beyond what we believe is possible. We have doubt. It is done unto you as you fill in the blank. What goes in there? Believe. Believe. Okay, how do you know what you believe? Um, it's, it's based, I think, on your past experiences. Mm -hmm. no, and is th is there, there is no room for doubt in our beliefs. If we have a theory, there can be some doubt. If we have a hypothesis, there can be some doubt. If we have a precedent, there can be some doubt as to whether it's going to work again or not. Hmm. But when you okay. have a belief, when you have a belief that's a rock-solid core understanding, this is how it works. There is no maybe in a belief. Okay. Okay. Are you okay to accept that? I can. Okay. So that's what separates a desire from a belief. Affirmations, we're talking about our desires. Practical prayers, we're talking about our beliefs. And since we're using that same active element, which is I am prosperous, or I have my perfect, wonderful, loving relationship, or I fit back into my prom dress in time for the reunion, whatever that statement happens to be, that's a claim that we're making on the infinite creative power that creates everything. And if for whatever reason we are claiming it, but we don't believe it, What's going to work is our belief rather than our claim. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can sit there spinning our wheels, making affirmations that we don't believe in, and we can just continue thinking that it's God not wanting us to have it. It's our belief that we're not going to have it. It is our doubt that, it, that, it's, that it's possible or that it's happening that's in control because it's done unto us as we believe. Mm -hmm. So... How do you overcome doubt? You have to deal with what you believe. Yep. Actually, and, yep. and dig it out. Yep. Yeah. So um, a, an affirmation from self-help and the realization step, the 
third step in a practical prayer are both creative elements. They are both very potent creative forces that activate the creative power in the universe to create something new, as long as we believe them. Mm. So the, mm. the, 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 the creative element in a prayer is always there. There is also a diagnostic element in the prayer. Because if we get ourselves into a position where we are aware of who we are and what we are and that we are expressions of the infinite, when we say that affirmation and we're claiming something we don't believe, a little voice says, ah, I don't think so. You know? I go to my high school reunion and have a wonderful time and I fit perfectly into my prom dress from when I was 18. And the voice says, hey, Tubby, that's not going to happen. <laughs> If we're just doing affirmations, we don't, first of all, we might not get that. And second of all, if we do, we just ignore it because there's, there's no mechanism for, oh, what happens if I don't believe it? So if we get that, what we do is use that, that response, that little voice inside of our head, that voice of doubt, that voice of, we call it yeah, buts. Yeah, but you're not going to do this. Yeah, but you can't do that. We use that diagnostically because that voice is telling us what we actually believe. I am claiming that I'm going to the prom and I'm looking great and the little voice is saying, not going to happen. Okay, well, if I just let, let, leave it off there, then what's going to happen is it's not going to happen because I believe it's not going to happen. And that's the law responding to my belief rather than the claim that I want to be making. So that's the diagnostic thing that comes up. That's, that's how we know what our doubts are. Okay, I hear you say, once we have some doubt, how do we overcome it? Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, then okay. let's let's take a break and then we'll talk some more about that. Okay. Are you ready to get results? Now, that's not a rhetorical question. Are you ready to get results? R U R 2 G R. That's actually the abbreviation for the steps in a practical prayer. Recognition, unification, realization, gratitude and release, with a couple of extra steps in there in case some doubt creeps in along the way. R-U-R 2-G-R. This class is about the prayer technique that's common to all of the spiritual practices and religions in the most effective prayers that they have. And by effective, I mean that the prayer works. It actually creates a change in the experience of the person doing the prayer. It gets a result. We're going to begin with theory, and then we're going to take it into practice. By the end of the class, you will have your very own practical prayer that will help create transformation in your life. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We've been talking about doubt that our prayers are going to be answered and how we can overcome them. And so we've been through the process that leads up to that little voice in the back of our head saying, yeah, but that's not going to happen, to tell us that we have doubt, that we have disbelief. And that is the diagnostic element of a practical prayer, because it's done unto you as you believe. That's the part that tells us what we believe in whatever area we're doing the prayer about. Mm -hmm. The way that we overcome that uh, is to refute it head on. And I'm going to go over the, the steps that lead up to that realization or affirmation step in a practical prayer because it's really important. When we're just doing a self-help affirmation, we're standing there in a clear field saying, I am prosperous, or I am healthy and vibrant, or I am the best looking uh, alumni at my high school reunion wearing the same dress I wore to the prom. Uh, and that's the claim that we're making and putting into the universe. And as we discussed before the break, if we don't believe that that's going to happen, we're going to get a yeah, but we're going to get some pushback from our own consciousness or our subconscious that whatever it is that we're claiming is not going to happen. The difference between a practical prayer and a plain old affirmation is that we don't start with the claim. We start by winding back a little bit and we turn our awareness to the infinite that divine creative power that created everything. We can call it God. We can call it spirit or nature. It's the same process that began in the Big Bang and has been evolving and unfolding ever since. Whatever our understanding of the creative process in the universe is, we identify that that process is there. That's the first step, identifying that infinite power that creates everything. 
It's got all the energy. It's got all the substance. It's got all the potential. It's got all the intelligence. All of it is that one. And it shares it with its creation. It has to, because that's all there is. If there's consciousness, if there's creativity, if there's intelligence anywhere, it's the divine. It's that one sharing itself as that. Second step, we identify that since we're part of that creation, that divine goodness is the truth of what we are as well. So that infinite creative power doesn't exist out there someplace that we might be able to have access to. It abides within. It's not something that we have. It's something that we are. We are using that creative power to create our lives and have been since the very beginning. And we're continuing to do so. So aware that we are in partnership with the infinite and we are wielding this infinite creative power, those are the first two steps. We then step into that third step, which is our affirmation or our realization, and say, I am the hit of my prom, and I step joyously into my prom dress, and I look great. And then the voice says, yeah, but you don't believe it. And what that tells me is I'm trying to make a claim on that infinite creative power that goes beyond what I believe. So there's two possibilities. One is I'm going to change my mind and say, you know what? That was an overreach. I don't really need to wear that dress, but I'm going to get one that looks just like it in a slightly more comfortable or flattering size and still have a great time at the prom. So we can let go of whatever it is that's not serving us. Or if that's what we really want to have happen, we, we can make ourselves aware that there might be some work, there might be some, some steps involved in fitting into that dress and making that desire happen. We have to be willing to embody it. We have to be willing to do our part and step into, the, get ourselves to the place where we can believe that whatever it is is possible. So we do a quick check on our consciousness. And, and if I'm getting a yeah, but it's not going to happen, that might be all of the voices in my head telling me that I can't lose weight, telling me that I don't look good, telling me that other people in my high school graduating class were better, stronger, faster, prettier, whatever, than me. And those all built my belief system up. And I need to work through that and let go of it so that I can have this new idea become operative. So what I'll do is go through that process and say, the thought that I have to repeat what's been happening my entire life since high school at the reunion is simply untrue. This is a brand new experience and I have the ability to step into it in a brand new way. There is no reason in the world that I am not able to wear that dress and rock it and have a great time. This good is certainly possible. And having reminded ourselves that this, this good is possible, say, I go to my prom looking great, wearing my, 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 I go to the reunion wearing my prom dress and I look great. And then either it's like, oh, that's great. And then we move on with a prayer or we get a yeah, but again, <laughs> you're still tilting at that windmill. <laughs> it's never going to happen. <laughs> and what we do is we go through that process of listening to the doubt. And then the next step, once we get that ping is to to refute whatever that doubtful voice is and, and address the fact that it doesn't necessarily have any power and then repeat our affirmation. And either the doubt goes away or we realize this is too much of a stretch for me. I'm going to pray for something different because it's not that God's going to say no, it's I'm already saying no. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. affirmation that I'm doing, the, the intention that I'm setting, the invitation that I'm making, I already believe that it's not going to happen. I got a little voice inside my head that says it's not going to happen. Well, okay, I don't need to blame God for that. <laughs> That's just what's going on. Is that helpful? I like the part where you said, uh, this is too much of a stretch for me. Mm -hmm. Because it's having a dialogue with yourself. You know, yeah. sort of a, an honest dialogue with yourself. And um, I, was really, I was really smiling as you were going through it because... I had a conversation with myself this, this morning. <laughs> it was so wild. It was something that, uh, that somebody was doing. And I thought, I did that. I've been doing that. <laughs> and I just, and I, I was like a freeze frame, get out. And then I thought, well, that's no big deal. And then all the doubts came, just mm -hmm. flooding in why I, and I stopped it right there. I said, hold up, hold it right there. Just stop. And I listed all the reasons why I couldn't. And this other person had all these reasons or um, 
whatever that they could. And I thought, well, now wait a minute. You do have one thing going for you. You've got the power of God that mm-hmm. has always been with you. What is your problem? And I just started laughing because I thought of the practical prayer. I know I was right in it. I know I was in it. And so I think that, and this has to do with uh, the first class that I took with you on practical prayer. And it was about how Jesus didn't obviously do all the steps because he was living it. Mm -hmm. And I never, ever forgot that, ever. And I, and I walk in that because I wanted to, to be able to live it in such a way that I could catch myself, you know, in moments like I did this morning and thought, ah, uh, you know what, what do you have? What do you really believe? Well, I believe that, you know, in the creative power of God and I don't need all of these other things visible right now. If I do need them, they'll come. And bingo, I just, I just laughed. I said, you know, haven't you been in this a little bit too long these time? <laughs> dealing with these, you know, but I think maybe it doesn't matter how long, you know, it was, um, it was a little bit of a vulnerability that I was caught in and all of the, um, everything I knew kind of went. And then I said, whoa, no, wait, you can come back here. You do have this. And in terms of belief, you know, I ran through probably not as articulate as you just mentioned it, but I went through what do you believe? And my beliefs were based on how I had seen uh, divine power work before. No reason it can't happen. So whatever it is, it will show up at the right time. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know if I would say work like I normally say. I think it's time. Don't rush. Just be calm and let the process happen based on the steps and all the stuff that you know and check your notes sometime. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have to use my notes as much anymore, but it's, it's still there, you know, and it's, the answer is yes. And, uh, If it's not by two o'clock this afternoon, it doesn't mean it's a no. Other things may happen, may need to be in place, Mm -hmm. not with God, but with me, you know, and and that basically is just belief that I can. Yeah. And I don't have too many I can'ts in my life. I, I can. Well, why not? You know, why can't you? I can this time. I don't have a good reason. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not coming with a good reason. So, yeah. The reason yeah. is because that's the way it is. And and the recognition is that it doesn't need to stay that way. It can mm-hmm. change. And when we are open to and aware of and participating in the change, then what is doesn't matter nearly as much as it would otherwise. So in Scripture, Jesus doesn't do a lot of doubting. Yes, other folks around who are like in disbelief and doubt and wondering, but he didn't do very much of that because he had that certainty. He, I would guess after he did one of his prayers, he did not get a yeah, but because mm-hmm. he was so in tune, so in that zone, so knowing that the infinite power, that divine presence, the father within was within that there was no room for doubt. You know, yay, Jesus. You know, I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> so I have this technique that I can use to tell me what it is that I don't believe so that I can reshape that and either invite in something that's closer to what I do believe or be willing to do the work and the transformation, the surrender of letting go of that idea wherever yeah. it came from that I don't deserve it, that I can't have it. You know, that's there, there's some work. There's some work. I, it's, yeah, I I wish we had more time to talk about it because it's, it's such an important thing with Jesus. Uh, I love the way I, what I read with Ernest Holmes years ago. He said, uh, Jesus is not the great exception, but the great example. Yep. And I thought, whoa, now if this is a great example, then I'm getting it. You know, I am getting this example and I'm copying it and I'm going to do it until it works. And um, it's, it sometimes takes a bit, you know, but it gets easier. 
Um, yeah. You know, I don't know if you ever, do you ever get on autopilot? Where it just, um, you don't have to worry about it. You just kind of go with it. We're just, we're, yeah. And, you know, once again, it works until it stops working. And it's important to pay attention, you know, because, yeah, I'm, I've got my belief system and I'm understanding where I'm comfortable operating in my belief system. And it goes along and it's creating stuff pretty wonderfully. There's great coincidences showing up in my life. And every once in a while, something comes along that sucks. <laughs> and then that's a reminder to me, oh, I can use the process. I can I can do practical prayer. I can go through the steps and either un use it to understand what my belief system has in it or to make a change in the experience that I'm having or sometimes both and then work through that and then it usually fits into the tendency of my life experience once I've gone through something it doesn't show up exactly the same way again sometimes the same thing shows up in a different form mm -hmm. there are lots of costumes and disguises that my issues have <laughs> <laughs> I like that I like yeah. that Oh, look, it's my childhood issues showing up wearing Groucho glasses with a big nose. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's like, OK, listen, uh, I don't think I want to go. When you said stretch, this is too much of a stretch. I might say, listen, you know, and I don't think I want to do this. Not that it's not possible, but to be honest, I may not want to do all I need to do to get in that dress. You know, I, and I may that's say, OK. Yeah. The, 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 the place of harmony isn't whether we get into the dress or not. The place of harmony is if we are feeling okay about what it is that we are doing. Yeah. Because if we give up and say, well, I'm not going to wear that dress because I'm not good enough and I don't deserve it and I've never had this and I've always been a problem, blah, 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 blah then we're giving a lot of power to the negative mm -hmm. rather than realizing, yeah, that was, that was a different time. Yeah. And wearing that dress was a different experience for me. And, you know, three kids later, it's probably not going to happen. So let me just let go of that idea and turn my attention to what I really want. So if I were wearing that dress and going to the prom and rocking it, how would I be feeling? What would I be doing? What would my experience of life be? And let's claim that and let go of the attachment to it's got to be that dress, which, P.S., almost nobody's going to remember anyway. You know, what's funny? <laughs> you know what's funny about this? I got this dress. <laughs> it is not a prom dress either. It's not, and, and I'm thinking, I am definitely going to wear this dress again. And I was going through all the steps with you until you got to the end. And I said, I'm wearing this dress. <laughs> I am wearing this dress because it knocked it out the park. Wasn't even prom though, you know. It was more recent. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, yeah, some actually something's coming up, and I said, I'm wearing that dress. All right. All right. And when the bar gets set in your in your working around life on Earth, the the bar gets set to the level where okay, I'm gonna have to do whatever it takes to clear the bar so that I can wear the dress. Then the same question comes up. You know, don't wait until the week beforehand. No, i got to start like yesterday. There you go. On this one. There you go. Let's uh, take another break and then do a prayer on overcoming doubt. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy to understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. 
We've been having a wonderful conversation about doubt and overcoming doubt. And I very rarely turn to scripture, but John 14, 12, <clears throat> whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. Jesus was saying, all this I do, you can do, and more. Same process repeating itself now. So, as Carol mentioned, that Ernest Holmes mentioned, that Jesus was not our great exception, that he could do it, nobody else can. Jesus is our great example, showing us what we can do, what is possible for us. So, and it's not like Jesus is the entire story. Jesus is one example of how this can work for us. So let's harness that ability for ourselves. Let's do a prayer that acknowledges all this I do, you can do, and more. And use that to address whatever doubt or hesitation that we have. There are times when we think, oh, only God could make this happen. It would be a miracle if this were to happen. And in fact, everything that has ever been described as a miracle is the infinite creative power creating something new. Because it's only got one law. There is one creative power that creates everything. Miracles are the things that we look at that we would never have guessed possible before they happen, that we would not have predicted are possible. But everything that has happened, every miracle that has happened has been the unfolding of that infinite creative process, that creative law working in the same way, creating something new and different. And that applies to each of us. Everyone within the sound of my voice is that divine power and presence taking form. How do I know this? Well, I know that taking it back to the beginning, in the beginning there was darkness and void and God. There was just God. Or the Big Bang, there was a singularity. And God said, let there be light, and the light showed up. And since there was nothing other than darkness and void and God, where did the light come from? It came from God. Same thing in the story of the Big Bang. The singularity exploded, began expanding immediately was just create, created huge amounts of energy, radiant energy. And everything that exists in the manifest universe is that radiant energy reacting, interacting, unfolding, and turning into atoms and molecules and planets and galaxies and so forth. And in scripture, there's the story of the begats. <laughs> As things came into being and God continued creating more and more stuff. The reason that's important is because there is only that one divine essence. There is only that one energy and substance, that one intelligence, that one love that has been unfolding and revealing and expressing and creating since the beginning of time. And since I am part of that creation and each one who is listening to me now is part of that creation, that's what we are. We are that divine presence taking individual and particular form. That's the truth of what we are. There is no question about this. There is no possibility that God is everywhere in the universe, that God is everywhere in the universe except the three feet around me. <laughs> <laughs> it is not possible <laughs> that it's all God except me. It's either all God or it's not. And the creation stories that we have are pretty compelling. So as long as we're willing to believe the creation stories, it's a simple step to agree that that creation is, is what we are as well. And that that creative process is continuing to unfold. There's nothing new that's been created since the, the Big Bang. It's been unfolding and evolving, but all of the laws, all of the principles, everything is continuing to express. And it's expressing as us. And consciousness is at hand as us. And consciousness had to have come from the infinite. Everything came from the infinite. So the creative power is the infinite expressed as us. Consciousness is the infinite expressed as us. So as we set the intention to create something new, that newness comes about. It can be something that's completely reasonable, that we're completely comfortable with, and it can be something that we have some doubt about. So I am now setting the intention that as we go through this process, as each one opens to that new possibility, that stretch possibility of something that never happened before, that there's every reason to believe might not happen, to meet that doubt with the absolute sure knowing 
that whatever good we're seeking is possible. There might be something for us to do. There might be something for us to surrender. There might be something new for us to engage with. But that infinite creative power is always saying yes. It is always saying yes. Once we get our small selves out of the way, once we acknowledge that we have doubt, that it came from wherever it came from, and we get past the doubt, that goodness is unfolding. And it's unfolding immediately. There is no hesitation. There is no delay. There is no waiting to uh, earn the right or needing to buy a ticket. The good is already happening. It's happening now for each of us in our own way. And I'm so, so grateful for it. I'm grateful for the good that's unfolding. I'm grateful for the wonderful way that it expresses. And I'm grateful to be able to speak this word of opening, of invitation, of intention, and release it into that same creative law that has created everything. And know it is now creating this newness in each of our lives. A transformation beyond doubt. Newness unfolding. And so a deep feeling of thanks, I speak this word, I let it go, and I know that it's so. And so it is. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at newthoughtphilly.org. That was episode episode number 143 of the Practical Prayer Podcast. You sure it's 143? I thought it was 143 last week. I'm not keeping the record. You, you, I'm depending on you. That's what I heard that number a couple times. Uh, could be. Could be. I don't think so. Okay. So got this yellow sheet of paper. Tells me 143. Okay. okay. I don't know. It's an interesting prayer. Usually the prayers are for something specific, and overcoming doubt is something that's very amorphous. Because it's one of those things that you don't know that you've overcome doubt because you feel that you've overcome doubt. You know that you've overcome doubt because whatever you were doubting goes away. Yeah, for me it's an aha moment. You know, and I'm thinking, what were you thinking that for? (laughs) 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 You you know, your memory is short, girl. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think um, being invested in the process and in the the belief that it's where it works now you know in the introduction it says that um, you know I have a lot of questions Mm -hmm. and uh, and of course I do so that introduction probably can last forever I, I do have a lot of questions but the the huge difference in some people's questions is that my attitude is that I am fully believing that this that I have been introduced to is correct and right because it's hit on too many things that I always believed growing up. Mm -hmm. So it's just hit on too many things. And I'm thinking, okay, so why were you worried? It was just something you forgot or it's a small thing that needs to be tweaked. Girl, go. <laughs> 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 so it, it, you know, it's worth taking a minute. Uh, I don't think the hard work takes really a long time. It depends on how much you want it, mm-hmm. you know, how important it is to you. And uh, so I'm just saying that in case somebody's thinking this is rough. It, it can be a tiny bit confusing because anything new is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this, this can, it's mysterious. It's mysterious. You know, there are things that we continue to learn and we continue to get ahas about. Now, I like to say that all the laws of aerodynamics have been in existence since the very beginning, since the mm-hmm. Big Bang. Uh, it took a long time for there to be planets that had air on them, so it didn't matter for a long time. 
and then there's aerodynamics and laws here on Earth, and the birds learn to fly and evolve to fly, and I think I have reason to believe the dinosaurs did too, and some bugs. But it took until 100 years ago for humans to learn how to fly. And we're using those laws of aerodynamics that have been in existence for 14 billion years. Mm -hmm. So are there new laws to learn about? <laughs> are there new ways to apply this principle? Probably. Probably. That's what we're involved in. That's what the creative process is about. But I think the magic is in that word belief, you know, mm -hmm. uh, examining beliefs. And that could take a lifetime, you know, for sure. But if you believe that you, infinite possibilities, you know, I love that term. Like you should never say things to me like that. <laughs> never. Because... <laughs> Because, you know, I'm one of those people who used to wake up with a thousand good ideas before I could get to my slippers mm -hmm. and could not see why any one of them couldn't be possible. Not all of them, because there's not enough hours in a day, but whichever right. one I pick, hey, it's good work. Um, but that takes a bit, you know, you say, OK, why not? And and practical prayer, not just practical prayer, but practical prayer as a lifestyle. Um, take, makes everything different. Yeah. I have this huge to-do list of all the stuff that I'm involved in. And some of the things that I'm doing are on a daily basis and some are weekly and some are, uh, I, you know, I, I do annual things and some of them are, uh, projects mm -hmm. and I have huge enthusiasm for all of them. And there are projects that have been sitting there for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't like it to be okay. I'd love to have those be finished so I can think up new projects and work on those and and be involved in that. But that you know, there's fourteen hundred and forty minutes in a day and I get to invest each of them in whatever it is that I'm gonna do. And if I try and go in too many different directions, then I wind up being exhausted and my next fourteen hundred and forty are very ineffective. So it's about being in balance. It's not just about, oh, I can create everything. Hmm. Yeah. I ask myself, what is mine to do? Just because I can do it doesn't mean it's mine to do. Mm -hmm. Next thing I'll say is, well, which one makes your heart sing? Yep. Now, at, I'm not sure how good a question that is at 25 or 30, but when you get to my, my age, I think it's cool to ask what my, makes my heart sing because pretty much I've done the rest. So <laughs> why can't I do something that makes my heart sing now? Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe it's and, a good a good question, you know, throughout life. I don't know. Yeah. And the question maybe instead of what makes my heart sing, what's, what makes my heart sing right now? What makes my heart sing next? Because, mm -hmm. yeah, when I was 25, I had no idea about lots of things. And if I'd asked that question, I would have gotten different answers than I've gotten now. And the important thing to remember is that that process keeps working. So we don't need one answer forever. We oh, need yeah. an answer for now and then the willingness to, as they say on the shampoo bottle, lather, rinse, repeat. I, I just <laughs> I just think that is such a powerful thing. You know, it's a powerful conversation to have because life is confusing and people are looking to try to find their way, meaning in life and all of that. And sometimes all of that gets a little bit heavy, uh, even even later in life. You know, it gets heavy and then I meet people and I'm still trying to find God's will for my life. And I'm thinking, you know, what makes your heart sing? Just mm -hmm. start with that. And it's not forever. It, you're adding on to it and shaping it as you go. And certainly some things I had to drop because it didn't fit into the song. I liked them. You know, mm -hmm. they were nice. I could do it. But yep. it doesn't fit into the song. That's not going to work for right now. Yeah. All right. Well, we can continue talking forever. And probably will, because yeah. this is 143 episodes in. A reminder to the folks who are uh, watching on New Thought Media Network, uh, the Practical Prayer podcast lives on bethelight.com, be-the-light.com. You can get all of the stuff that we had in the promotional announcements, plus there's a little button for the Practical Prayer podcast where you can click in and uh, and send us a message, a question, a <laughs> A suggestion, an inquiry, a prayer request, etc. And we will take that under advisement and bring it into the program accordingly. Carol, as always, thank you. Thank you. And I love the purple, by the way. Is that purple at your house or is that? It's purple. Excellent. Excellent. Just perfect. 
and we will continue this. Uh, it'll be next time, uh, next Monday at, uh, at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Be yeah. well. Bye. Please help us say thank you to our organizational sponsors, including the Hefferlin Foundation, Affiliated New Thought Network, International New Thought Alliance, Science of Mind Archives and Library Foundation, Center for Spiritual Living Denver, Center for Spiritual Living Midtown, New Thought Philadelphia, Planned Happiness Institute, Summit Center for Spiritual Living, One Heart Retreats, Center for Spiritual Living on the Lake, Unity Kitchener, Unity Spiritual Center, Ottawa, Ohm Center for Spiritual Living, Satya Center, Begin Within Ministries, Center for Spiritual Living, North Jersey, Unity of Savannah, and the Center for Spiritual Living, Seattle, as well as all of our individual donors. Thank you for being part of the New Thought Media Network. Please like, share, and subscribe. New Thought Media Network, positively inspiring.